Hi again, everyone. Chris Tisdell here again. Thanks for tuning in. In this presentation, I'm going to show you one of the fastest ways to solve inequality problems in mathematics. I'll give you a general idea of what to do and we'll go through a few examples. So let me share my screen with you and we can get started. All right, here are some problems from, say, a first course in calculus. Solve these inequalities for all those points on the x uh, on the real line that satisfy these things. So we need to determine some sort of interval or intervals in this problem. Now, there's a standard way of doing these that you'll see in every calculus textbook. And in fact, I have some videos on this as well. You break it up into two inequalities and then you do some algebra. Now, the advantage with the method I'm going to show you today is that it involves almost no calculations, almost none. And why? Because it's uh, centered around the idea of visualization and a little bit of geometry. So I hope you like it. Let me show you the, uh, the idea. Before we get down to business, though, what does this actually mean? We've got the absolute value of x minus some number. So think of a as a number. The absolute x minus a, and you've got some inequality there. What does it mean? Well, it means the distance from whatever x is to the point a. So it means or measures... The distance from x to a. All right, so if I was to draw a little number line in here and say um, a is the point 1 and say b is the point, say, 7, this distance here is course the absolute value of 7 minus 1 which is just 6 if x is say negative let's go down to say negative 4 this distance is negative 4 minus 1 absolute that will give you the absolute of um, negative uh, 5 and then you take the absolute of negative 5 and you'll get 5 okay so it just just revolves around distance okay now when we solve an inequality like this we are trying to find all the x points whose distance to the point one half in this case is no greater than one. Is the distance is less than or equal to one. Okay. Now, if you can remember that, then these problems are really easy. Okay, you don't have to do any calculations. Okay, so the distance between x and the point one half is less than or equal to one. So let's let's actually do a problem and we can see how it works. So let's call this part one. All right. So let's consider the first part. And for this one, you'd actually don't have to even write anything down, except I like to draw a little diagram. All right, so let's go in, draw in my number line. Here's, say, zero. Here's a half. Here's one. It's negative a half. All right. Now, what we want is to determine the set of points whose distance from the point to the point one half is less than or equal to one. So I can basically go one unit this way and one unit that way. And that, 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 that's really all I want to do. So if I add one there, I'll get to three on two. If I take one away, I'm still within one unit of one half. So that's the interval. Okay, I'll put that in a different color. Okay, because it's less than or equal to, we keep the, the endpoints. Okay. That's it. That's the problem done. Now, we've given a good geometric description. Let's just write, write it down. What interval do we have here? 
thus. So x is greater than or equal to negative one half, but less than or equal to three on two. Oops. Okay, so this is the solution to this problem. That was pretty easy, pretty quick. So let's take a slightly more complicated problem and see if the method works there too. And it does. You only have to do one calculation for these other problems. Okay, so let, let, let me show you. All right, so here's the next problem. Solve this inequality for x. So let's call that inequality 2. Okay, now the only change here between this problem and the first problem is that the, the, the number in front of the x, the coefficient of x, isn't 1. So you can just divide everything by 2 and you'll get the same form as we had above. So divide everything by 2. If I divide 2 by 2, I get 1. And look, it's the same problem as this one up here. Okay, so you would go through, you, you can rerun the argument if you want, but I'm not going to. Okay. Okay, now the reason I've shown you that is because you might be given this problem to do instead of this problem. So you can take that and really sort of get that coefficient of x to a 1. That's the secret for all these problems. What about this one now? Let's call that part 3. This is a little bit different because the coefficient is 1 and I don't have a negative sign there and the inequality is around the other way. So let's, let's see what we can do with that one. Okay. Okay, now I am going to divide through by 2. So let's divide left-hand side by 2 and the right-hand side by 2. I'm dividing by a positive number, so I don't have to worry about changing the signs. Okay, and now I'm going to make that a minus by writing it like this. Okay, now this, again, is in this sort of form, and we want the distance, we want all those points x, whose distance to negative a half is greater than or equal to one unit. So let's just draw another picture and uh, we can see what's going on here. So let me draw the number line in. So let's go to, let's say that's zero, that's to be negative a half, yeah? And I want all the set of points whose distance to this point is no less than one, it was greater than or equal to one. So let's go one unit this way, one unit that way, And I want all those points whose distance are at least one unit away from this point here. Okay, so it's going to be these points here and these points here. Let me put a bit of colour in there. Okay. So, so you can just see that, that, that there's one unit there, there's one unit there. We're not, we're not, not, not choosing any points in that interval. We're going outside of that interval. Okay, so why is this method so good? Well, firstly, yes, there are different ways of solving these problems. This is not the only way. There's the standard way where um, you would split the problem into two inequalities and then work on those two inequalities. The problem with that is that it's very algebraically heavy. Okay, or well, it's heavier than, than this. With this, you really only have to rearrange the inequality by, by some sort of division and then draw a picture. Okay, so as an alternative, what would we do for, say, part three? Okay, part three is here. All right, if I was to do this the, the, the standard way, how would you do it? Well, you would go, okay. You would, you would split this up into two cases, yeah? Oops. Sorry. Okay, you, you would have two columns like that, and you would go through and you would 
So take that to the other side. You've got, uh, yep. So take that away. Whoops. Yep, you've got that, and then you divide by the two. Okay. So you still get exactly what I, I have here. Okay, so what we should do is write down the actual answer for this one. So x is x is less than or equal to negative 3 on 2, or x is greater than 1 half. All right. Did I do that for part two? Yes, I did. Okay, so it's sort of a check. Even if you want to do it this way, and there's nothing wrong with doing it this way, except there's more calculations. Okay, you can see, yeah, 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 it's the, it's the same thing, just by doing this. So for me, this method that I've just showed you is good for visualizing and uh, providing a check and a fast way to solve these inequalities. If you take a Calculus 2 course, you'll be looking at convergence of, of series and power series and things like this. And one of the calculations in those types of problems is to solve some of these inequality problems. Anyway, what are your fast methods to solve inequalities? I'd love to hear them. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this method useful. All right. All the best, everyone. Bye.